So our food krakow, um, the, 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 um, the, the idea behind it was that we need to relocalize food systems, driven um, by the basically uh, three principles, primarily the climate change, that the food system is the biggest contributor ca to carbon in the world, and, and, and we all contributed it to it by the way we buy food. So we have to change how we buy and how we produce. The second one was just the local, the local control thing, the fact that we, we have a problem of alienation from, from politics uh, in Britain and in Wales. And so it's about, uh, about local control and actually having, you know, and in this case, food producers having control over the, the way that they sell food, which they don't at the moment. Um, and then the third was the, the youth thing. I had two daughters, raised two daughters here, and basically I want them to stay here. Um, and, uh, but most, loads of young people just leave because they aren't the opportunities. So that, that's the third thing. But in that order, really, the, the climate change was the primary one. Um, so uh, these, in the last year, uh, there have been some amazingly important reports um, s sort of setting out the direction that we have to go to. There's the um, Intergovernment Panel for Pli climate, cha uh, climate Change and Land uh, uh, Report, which is where it's specified that uh, the food system um, contributes a quarter to one third of all greenhouse gas emissions. That's, that's where that figure comes from. And then the, the RSA in London has done a huge report for the UK called Our Future in, in, in the land, on the Land. And, and that's, that's RSA based in London. But actually, the person who directed this whole thing lives in Raglan uh, on an organic farm, Sue Pritchard. So we, you know, we've, got the, we've got the number one person right here. And, so she, and she's very supportive of this. She's in, in London today. And both of them kind of set out our agenda, which is around we need to respond to climate change as an emergency, um, and the, the food system is, is taking away control from local producers, the local producers are being shafted, um, all the money is going to these great conglomerates across the world, um, and local supply chains and small businesses, are, uh, food businesses, are being um, left, out of the, left out of the picture and are struggling. So that's the, and, and all of this is in the most authoritative documents that one could possibly hope to have. So we've really got a very profound um, basis from which to work. Um, so what did we do? The first thing we did is we didn't actually tell anyone what we were doing. We just sent Tim, our resident uh, filmmaker, producer, photographer, or everything, everything um, and we interviewed businesses and, f and wrote stories and took photographs. And we asked each business, who do you work with? Who do you supply? Who do you receive from? We thought, max, there are 20 businesses in Krikow. So we budgeted for 20. We knew about eight or nine. Um, so we, we thought that 20. When we got to 40, we were struggling right, with the, with the finances because that was just more than we'd thought that there were. Um, but, but just by asking each business, who do you work with, we suddenly started discovering all of these other businesses that we didn't know about. Um, so we then put it all on a website, and ourfood.org slash uh, and we published it. Uh, and, then, and then we said, let's meet and talk. So we did that first, and that created a buzz. It was a really good way of kick-starting something, because people don't like to discuss theoretical things. You know, oh, we've got this great idea. What do you think? People don't turn up to meetings about that sort of thing. They turn up to where there's a bit of action. So we decided to act first and talk second. Uh, we then went on to Facebook and we set up a group and a page. We start, we're, we're still developing this. We're, we're getting some professional people in to help us to, to develop this and grow the, the local following. But we're doing pretty well. I mean, we've had 23,000 reaches of our posts in three, four weeks. Um, from nothing, so uh, we are, you know, we're uh, we're, ge we're getting there basically. There's a lot more work to do on, on that, but that's the thing. Um, and then uh, the the other three things that we'll be doing right now, sort of before Christmas, uh, a Christmas campaign. So we're going to we're producing a brochure saying <coughs> buy local food for Christmas. This is what you can buy in your locality. Nice little card, and we're going to put it through seven thousand 
letterboxes, uh, sort of seven mile radius. Um, and, and we'll see what happens. We, we actually don't know what's going to happen, um, but we will measure the response, and then we'll, ga we'll start to gauge where, we're, where we are. We're producing a little local brand. So if you go into the Natural Way shop just, just down the road, hello, Natural Way people, um, they, they label things. So you'll see their little Welsh dragon on the Welsh stuff, and there's a UK thing on the UK stuff. So we've made little, we're going to make a little sticker, which they can then put on the local stuff. Uh, and then we'll go to all the other shops and the restaurants and things and try to get that established. Um, and then finally, we, we want to work in the schools. We want to go into the schools um, and talk to the high school students about the possibility of um, uh, getting involved in, in, in the food business uh, and, and meeting the businesses that we now have networked together. Um, and then also into the primary school to talk about the kids. The, the, the good thing about going to, to the local schools for the businesses is not only do the children learn, but then they tell their parents that this food's nice and then sales go up. Right, so it's a, it is a marketing opportunity uh, for businesses. So that's where we are so far. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop there and hand over to, to Rudolf, who is 35 years further down the line <laughs> than we are. Um, and, and I visited, um, I was invited to join a small group to visit uh, his region uh, last year. And I was completely blown away. I mean, I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. And, and what, for me, what it's all about is when producers become powerful, when producers take back control, to use that phrase, when they take back control and start controlling the processing and the retailing and the whole food chain, then really things start to change. And that's the, that's the fundamental ambition here, is that the producers need to start becoming much more powerful uh, and start to, it's the, you know, start to dictate how the food economy operates around here. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Rudolf. Thank you, Duncan. Uh, it's a pleasure being with you here in Wales and with all the nice guests. Uh, I, I'm very pleased to be invited. Yesterday we had been at that university. Today we are here among colleagues. So also heartily welcome from my side. I'm, I'm, uh, it was, it's amazing, this country, you know, the own language, own ethnic uh, climate, all what, what the region uh, makes it, makes out, you know, works out. And a uh, lot of, Potentials, I have to say, what I've seen on the road, a lot of potentials <coughs> to put into value. I think this is one of the goals. So thank you that I can be with you today and have some interactions together. A <coughs> uh, few words about myself. Uh, I'm, I'm a farmer in Germany. Uh, my family is, is handling, owning and operating the farm since the 14th century on the same place. So we are belong to the indigenous local people in South Germany, in my area. And I always say we are doing organic. Since uh, the 14th century, uh, we are doing organic. Uh, there was only in between uh, one generation who applied pesticides and fertilizers. But still about 30 years, we are again on organic. Uh, we, we are back to the roots, I would say. Yes, and uh, so I was quite inspired uh, personally uh, when I did my degrees in, in agriculture engineering and then uh, agro how you say, sociology, sociology, agro, in, in Reading. I made not a degree, I just studied in Reading some time. And, uh, and tropical agriculture in, in, in Stuttgart. Then I was six years overseas first, first of all. <coughs> and uh, with the German government on bilateral aid in Africa and Asia, in, in, in Arabian countries. And there we already uh, had 
uh, we, we, we came up with the idea or that was our task to in install regional, to rebuild regional uh, strengths, I would say, for the farmers and, and uh, we are, were talking about integrated rural development projects. So when I came home, that was uh, the end of 83, so you, you know, so I'm where I'm located as best ages, I belong to the best ages now. Uh, in 83, uh, I took over the family farm. It was also my duty as the only son. And in my, but in my heart, I always have been a farmer, of course, and all farmers who are sitting here know that farmers are still very strong and feel always independent, and it's all over the world. It is it's difficult to get a, a farmer, so I, I agree. Uh, <coughs> and uh, so I took over the family farm in 1984, 1st January 84. And actually my first, and, and I realized that rural development is not only uh, d uh, needed in the southern countries, and farmers are not only losers in the southern and, and rural communities in the southern countries of the world, but also here in the center of Europe. Farmers uh, just on the, at, at the edge of the society, you know, and, and are the losers of industrial development. And so I think, and I, I realized, and together with friends, we decided to uh, come up with a kind of an NGO, with a Farmers Self-Help Initiative. And uh, the very first project we approached was to save the, very, the old local breed, Swabian Hall Pig which we'll uh, show you later. This peak is, is the eldest breed, the oldest breed in whole Germany. Uh, 200 years of records, breeding records. And uh, uh, of course, it's, it's related to the Wessex and Essex Saddleback and to our, to our Saddleback breeds in uh, all over Europe. And originally, all they came from China. All they came from China. But it was extinct at that time. And <clears throat> in Germany, we had 15 breeds, actually, in the 1950s, 60s, still. And uh, 12 disappeared out of 15. 12 autochthon indigenous breeds disappeared. Due to the industrialization of farming, you know, only hybrids, and not looking to the left and right to, and to preserve our biodiversity. So we started a project together that was our very first project to save our old breed, which was still known as very fertile, vital, you know, and stress resistant and a famous meat quality. Because so, and this was also the, the idea we have to redevelop, to redevelop uh, this, uh, to develop newly. Uh, this is one of our potentials. Since breeds and 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 let's say breeding of animals and seeds was always done by farmers, not by scientists, not by the rulers. These are assets of the farmers, and our potential. Generations of farmers, generations of farmers brought up these famous breeds. And it was our wish to preserve it as, and to, uh, to redevelop it as a potential, to use it as a potential. And that was a long way, actually, the starting point. We said we have to identify the potentials of our area and put them into value. And create the value chain. I will show it with the slides. In order that the farmers get the fair price, the reasonable price. 
because we in 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 the so-called modern agriculture uh, we experience that the value is on the point of sale the value chain and farmers far behind <clears throat> and that's a problem yes and so this was these ideas uh, moved us to to start a self-help initiative so the first few years were just voluntary I opened the office in my, on, at my farm I opened the office uh, for ru rural regional development <laughs> and uh, we met r frequently and discussed our eight with eight with the group was about eight farmers at that time and discussed our views and just like you are sitting here now and we discuss such issues and uh, I think I just it came into a first commercial stage in 1988 by founding the Farmers Association of Schwäbisch Hall with eight farmers just now we are 1560 so it developed step by step and we are quite strong now in the market and our farmers are getting best prices all over Germany I have to say uh, since uh, but I will show it with my slides so this is the outcome and um, and we have also quite partnerships with friends and colleagues Germany East Germany, uh, in East European countries and even overseas fine so just a uh, few slides and in between you just ask me please yeah. if any question you ask me please so here you see our brand the main brands we do have you know yes and this is the, the umbrella actually we call it the umbrella of, of our all our brands so this is a brand itself now in Germany farmers association of Schwäbisch Hall that means everybody knows immediately if he sees the logo aha these are farmers second oh it's a com it's a community of farmers and third the location so from the beginning so you, so you can see we did all the marketing ourselves we never employed any agency you know uh, we always do the marketing ourselves still now so we have a, 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 a a center uh, a media center inside in our group and very f right from the beginning the idea was we have to communicate just what we are doing nothing else just what we are doing and people will understand what we are doing and these these are our assets best product and communicate our cultural social approach of course first of all you have to, uh, to, to, to look on the best product rather it's full organic or we say premium production best product is first of course and uh, and then the key is good marketing to develop the to develop the, the value chain in farmers hand of course to turn it the other way this is the aim because farmers depend on their income in the first instance of course also we did about four to five years <coughs> on a voluntary basis even <coughs> telephone bill paper Porto was paid by us voluntary you know <coughs> then it came into a commercial state uh, in the, uh, yes some years ago, later okay yes here we are this is the region of Hohenlohe <coughs> we have about totally three and a half thousand farmers small-scale farmers uh, <coughs> let's say from 10 hectare the average is for 50 hectare my farm is also 50 uh, our farm I'm doing it with my sons 
to my wife and my sons. We are, we are uh, organic and Demeter certified farm. <coughs> Up to 250 hectares, which is very large in, in South Germany. But this is also the point, you know. From the beginning, we, we said, well, we have in South Germany only the small scale farmers. So there's no chance if we look into the international commodity business and with the international, with the, with the global prices, we can't compete, com com uh, 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 com <coughs> compete, thank you. Our only way to survive is to produce highest premium products, high premium products, best product, and sell them, of course, within the region, but the surrounding urban areas. So we are in the lucky situation that in South Germany, you know, we have Stuttgart, Munich, and all these cities. We have, we have uh, audience uh, and consumers which are quite rich, you know, educated, and even more and more motivated to all these issues, what we call added value to a product. And so that was the basic approach that we said, we have to come up with a new scheme. Not what certain uh, interest groups are propagating and science and uh, policies, no, policy makers, no. We start to rely, again, regional and to rely on our own potentials. As before, all our fathers and grandfathers did. Okay, Hohenlohe. So this is our mission, I already mentioned, to develop the potentials and resources of our region, Hohenlohe, into commercial and social values and provide them to the local farmers. So that the value is not at the end, uh, let's say, uh, on the point of sale. The richest Germans are the owners of Lidl, Aldi, and so on. So the large food dealers, uh, supermarket uh, chains. They are the richest in Germany, you know, on the list. <clears throat> so that, that indicates that the value is taken from the ground to the dealers. So that's a very poor development, I have to say. And our core values, of course, solidarity in business. That means each farmer, rather than a small scale farmer with 10 hectares or 250, has the same rights and duties and the same prices. Guaranteed prices and guaranteed offtake. So guaranteed sourcing of the products. But not to make, not so that the basic idea is not to make big profit, to concentrate profit. The basic idea is we work together and each should share the profit. Each member should have his share. Then, of course, organic and sustainable agriculture, not just profit oriented. <coughs> then, social projects, commitments, I'll show some some examples, cultural projects, are, because, you know, we have a strong culture, even here, I, I experienced now the last two days, the, the Welsh culture, very strong, and yes, very strong, I have to say. And uh, we should, we should rely, or we should live our culture, you know, from the roots to develop it in the future. That's the point. Not only look backwards to our traditions. Traditions mean tradition means each generation has to add. We take the best from our history and we add and adapt it to the local conditions and to look at, look to the future. That means tradition. Not only backward minded, also minded in the future, to the future. Okay. So this is the development uh, which took place. Uh, actually, we started, the, the, that was the business case. We started 88. <coughs> now we are about a uh, bit more than 1,500. 
uh, among them are, so these are old figures from 17. Now we have about 480 organic farmers among us. <coughs> and all the others are not conventional, but uh, doing uh, to our premium brands, premium products, premium schemes, you know. That means no GMO, that means uh, 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 genetic, special, as uh, old breeds, that means animal welfare, European soya instead of from Brazil, from the tropic area, you know. And uh, yes, local feed. At, at least, you know, if we import, then we import only the European soya from Austria, Italy, and so on. So in exchange, but we develop also the, it in Germany now. So, <coughs> and this is the business case. We are quite strong now with about 150 million euro per year and employing about 700 uh, staff members. Um, and it's operated by the farmers itself still. Let's say we have a team, I'm the chairman still, and we have a team um, of about 20, 25 farmers who are along his farm doing their bit, their job in our, a very good job in our association. So they are very motivated. Of course they are also educated, you know. I mentioned yesterday uh, even some took international degrees in, 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 in business development and uh, one, one took M MBA in, in East London College, you know. So this is, farmers also need to be very good educated. Rather ma a bachelor master level or let's say uh, some, that's very important. We have to be better than the conventional business. And I know farmers are, you know, they, they are mind, they have op quite open-minded and it needs, of, of course, a, a good uh, education. Yes, along with our farmer's business, aside our farmer's business. So this is my own farm, or let's say our family farm, we settled in the 14th century. And uh, 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 this is the office of rural development still. Before it was an, a restaurant inn. And when I came back, I converted it into a <coughs> into an office for rural development projects. So we are living here in this level and uh, the guest rooms. And behind you, you, you find uh, the farm, actually. It's about 50 hectares, very traditional. And yes. So this is the business group we developed during the last 35 years. Um, this is the holding, actually. The holding is the association. And all the business is outsourced. That means uh, this is the basic, the basic organization who, where every, each and every farmer has one vote. And uh, me, I am elected here as a, as a chairman by the, by the individual farmers. So we have the boards, the, the, the uh, um, control board. We have the, the chairman, the, uh, the board for, of chairmen, the director's board, you, you would say, and we have the assembly, general assembly, once a year. <coughs> then we, start, we have the, an own extension service, our own breeding, uh, uh, breeding um, society which was founded 86 already, the breeding society for the old breed, for the rare breed of Swabian horse. And then uh, the, com and the commercial business is, is, is here. AG means uh, shareholder, Aktiengesellschaft, what was heißt Akt? Not a limited, no, 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 no. Limited is, uh, is, is something different, SA. Yeah, typical. Aktiengesellschaft, yeah. Yes. <laughs> because a limited is quite slow in 
and difficult to handle. And if, if you have 1,500 members, shareholders, then in the next, in, in this in this sense, it's so we we prefer this kind of. Um, first, it was a limited, but we converted 20 years ago into a into a again share company. Share company yeah. But all shareholders are farmers and consumers. Farmers and consumers of the area. Then, yes, uh, processing facilities. Then some sub-organizations for cattle, for lamb, uh, cheese, milk. Then you find this is our educational wing. We just started four years ago. And spices. We are doing spices locally and uh, also international with some farmers groups in, 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 uh, in Africa and in India and East European countries. On eye to eye level, we say we call them seeds of hope. That means we import spices, we, we bring the organic scheme there, rather the same what we did at home. And uh, created some farmers cooperatives, built up some strong cooperatives and we source our spices from them. <clears throat> and they get a good price and a sustainable market. Yes, this is uh, one of our brand now, registered 1998 as a geographical education indication. So this is the old breed, but at, it, at its, its best, I have to say, you know, <laughs> yes, you see it is somehow, uh, it's a geographical indication uh, as Parma, Ham or Roquefort or Champagne or Parmesan cheese. And uh, this is important because you should register in time. If you have your premium products, you know, you should, after some time, you should register them as geographical indication. That's not a monopole if you register it. It is just to be safe about fake products. That's the main issue. Because a geographical indication can be used by each and every farmer in the certain region. But he has to fulfill the standards. You know, a geographical indication always stands on two pillows. One is the area, the region, and the second pillow is the st are the standards. You know, you, the standards mean no GMO, animal welfare, and all this stuff, you know? And the point is, if you can afford <laughs> to popularize your product if, through marketing. If your brand is widely known, you face the, 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 the problem, the sincere problem of fake products. And to avoid that, it's very good to get it early registered before it becomes popular. This is also a kind of experience we, we were facing during the last years. Yes, because farmers do the investment, farmers develop it, and it should be in the hand of the farmers when it gets an asset. Yes, so you have in time, you should think on to register it as a geographical education. That's uh, possible since the year 1992 within all European countries. Before it was not possible to register, only in France and Italy and Portugal. But on the way of harmonization uh, within EU of the, of the legal, uh, let's say all the legal uh, issues, um, <coughs> Germany had to adapt <coughs> and we were able to register it. So it's about the same scheme than organic because as you are registered, there is an audit scheme, there's a, a government control upon it. 
and that's important. So you, you have not to fight against fake products on, on private level. It is duty of the government to look after it. Same as with organic, I think you know that. You know that. Yes. 15 minutes more, okay, then I hurry, yeah. Okay. I thought you have some more time than yeah. yesterday. Well, we want to talk. Yeah, okay, okay. So I'll hurry a bit. So this is our abattoir. As I mean, that if I uh, talk about the value chain, of course, uh, the bottleneck, I, I said all the, all, also yesterday, is the, the bottleneck is, is uh, the, the processing facility, you know. And uh, so this is our, uh, our owned by farmers and, and consumers of the area. This is the historic uh, slaughterhouse. This is the processing and this is the, uh, the cutting area and this is the processing. Here we, we process meat, produce um, sausage. Sausage, here we produce sausage. Yes, Prince of Wales. <laughs> Everybody knows him. You with the pig. Yeah, and me with uh, rare breed, yes, of course. <laughs> this is part of our marketing, you see. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> This is always, you know, of course, we, uh, this is kind of marketing. We have to, this. Of course, all uh, products are labeled and, and, and uh, we have audit. So here we have our pork products, ham, sausage, um, back, the uh, lean loin, you say? Yeah, loin. Yes, and, and canned sausage. So uh, we are doing also not only meat, so also spices in our area, <coughs> uh, coriander, mustard. And then our main market uh, is with, uh, our main market uh, uh, are the butchers, the butchers. So this is the, the, the shortcut, I would say, in, 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 uh, in value chain is from farmer to butcher. I've seen two butcheries here, really nice butcheries. So this is the partnership. About 65% of our sales are to butchers. And here we can achieve the best price, of course. Then also other outlets. We have own outlets and uh, this is uh, one of our own outlets. Then this is, these are butchers symbolizing our partners, symbolizing catering, or hotel, hotel business. Then also we are very strong in partnership with leading, uh, with leading industrial companies. And uh, you know, they, they demand now all for the management, especially they demand good food. The, the management level asks for good food. It's not only to take the, the monthly salary along. It is, you know, they, they eat, normally they eat, they, they, they take their lunch in the, in, in the company and, and they demand good food. Yes. So this, uh, then we have own outlets. Uh, this is, was the very first, 1994, then in, in, in Stuttgart. Again in Stuttgart, traditional market hall in Stuttgart, it's important, you know. This is also important as a, as a multiplier. So if you have, for example, in London, uh, in, in a market hall or in a, in, a, in a certain place, in a popular place, an outlet, you know, it's, 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 of market, it's a point of mar a, a mosaic stone, a mosaic piece of marketing. Because there you reach journalists, the, the TV station, and so on, multi multipliers. So that's why. <coughs> but it's also, in, in terms of business, it's also quite nice. This is our main market, our regional market in my home village, established 2007. And it's the showcase, actually. It's the showcase you can see at the market hall. It's the showcase of all our products. <laughs> and all regional products on top. Because um, 
we have our all our own our farmers products in here but also each and every farmer and producer of the region is can offer their products eggs uh, honey whatever apples and and uh, even most <laughs> can uh, offer us that we purchase and sell it sell them here Duncan has have seen it so it is also attached uh, here a green classroom green classroom and uh, so it is part of our education and to, to get the youngsters uh, taught and get them along and motivated and to learn about our roots factory outlet this is in Berlin. Of course, in Berlin, you have to have a, a more modern approach in, in marketing in Berlin, right in between Berlin. This is in Trebisch Hall itself, the market hall. Yes. So these are our own outlets. Now this is our cheese, our cheese factory. Um, it's a very nice project and, uh, and it might even could be a good sample for this uh, region here, for this area. Um, we are producing, uh, it's owned 24% uh, by the Farmers Association and, uh, and <coughs> all others are spread. It's again a, a, a shareholder company uh, and uh, 420 owners actually, farmers and consumers. We produce there about 350 tons of cheese per year, milk, ice cream. And uh, our farmers are getting, that was, uh, I, I mentioned in the beginning, the best price all over Germany. You know, we have, our farmers are getting 64 euro cent per liter of milk. Plus premium quality, plus tax. So rather 70 to 75 <coughs> cent, euro cent per liter. And um, guaranteed, guaranteed price and guaranteed sourcing. And uh, yeah, same in, in pigs, our let's say Demeter price for the farmers is 4 euro 20. For organics, three euro eighty. For premium label, two euro thirty-five at present. Guaranteed price, guaranteed offtake as a sourcing. Just as example, same for cattle, same for sheep. That's dead weight. Yes, yes. that the price for that weight. Carcass. So we are doing, we have a deer, a game manufacturer from the local game. We, we uh, the hunters deliver them to our manufacturer. We process them, cut them, process them into salami, into meat, game meat, and in partnership with Edeka, which is a, a supermarket chain local supermarket chain as cooperative. Yes, then we do catering. So this is uh, one of our cultural events, regional food festival. Now this year it happens uh, 30, 23rd time. <laughs> also quite a tradition now. So five course menu. The youth, the, the young, young farmers presenting the traditional dances, the chefs, and so on. On this event, we do also, we hand out the cultural, the agricultural award, about the 6,000 euro, and for outstanding performance and initiatives on that 
So I'm sorry. sorry. So this is our house of farmers. I found it in the year 2012. Very old house, you find, but here you, are, you have even elder houses from the Celtics. This, is, uh, <coughs> this, is, this was built in 1250. 1250. Our own farmhouse was built in 1370. Then another house of farmers. The pre previous feudal castle of the feudals. And here we established, uh, so it re it, it, we established the Academy for Organic and Regional Development. Yes, so it's a seminar hotel and so on. Uh, we have, there we have also, we, you might know this person. He's the uh, president of Club of Rome. Hardy, this was the first organic professor in the world. So here, uh, Global Peasants' Rights Congress 2017. And here at uh, uh, United Nations New York in Geneva, we are members of the United Nations as we are appointed as NGO. So we are entitled to deliver speeches and and uh, introduce some petitions and so on. Then we have some international partnerships. Romania, India, Pepper, you see the Pepper, you see the, 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 the steering committee of the local cooperative here, uh, here harvesting Pepper. Autochton breed in Romania, uh, related to ours. Carpat area, Serbia, Zanzibar. <coughs> so these partnerships, international partnerships with farmers. Spices. So this means you can book visit in our area. We have about 300 traveling groups, you know, or bus tours. Uh, per year, and he is he's in charge to organize that <laughs> with the traditional cloth, of course. You know. This is now in in a mature stage, you know, and uh, uh, of projects. It, it's it's for us. It's the best public relation is to get in personal contact. So we send ambassadors out to our customers. We offer them that they could come a day at the point of sale. And this we call incoming touristic, you know. If a bus comes, let's say, with uh, people from Munich or Stuttgart to visit the farmers, <coughs> so they are convinced. And it strengthens the partnership because they experience and see that's not a fake, this is a true, it's, the stories are true, and we believe, we trust the product and we trust the communication about. Because a central point in our communication is direct from farmer, direct from farm. And uh, so they can, they can visit the cheese dairy, they can visit uh, the slaughterhouse, most, mainly from outside, of course. And uh, the farm, the pigs, this is important. It's very important to get in touch with the, our customers uh, surrounding the region, in the, from the urban areas around, surrounding. So I think that's it. Thank you for kind attention. And <laughs> yes. Just to say what I think the next stage of this project is, we, we want to, um, we, we started in Krakow just because we had to start, yeah? And we knew people here, and we knew that we could just whack it up and get going within months. Um, but it, th but Krikow's far too small for, to, to carry a project like this, far too small. So it has to be regional. Um, so based on the learning and the conversations we're having now, uh, the ne next year is about 
spreading it across the whole region. And, and there are modifications and things we've already learned that what we're going to do, what we're not going to do. Um, but one of the things that, Rudolf, you were saying was that we have to find our potential, yeah? And we have to develop that potential. And that's going to be the task for next year. What is it, actually, that is unique to this area? And, and the other thing is that we have to bring, the, as I said before, we have to bring the traditional farmers into the conversation, too, and have consumers. We, we need the climate people, too. That, 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 that's a key constituency now. So the climate people, the, um, the, the climate advocates, the... the the, the consumers, the farmers, and the food advocates, and the small producers, and the shops, and, and, and the catering. Um, and we need a conversation to work what that out. And we don't have to do everything. We just need to do some, we need to choose. We may, need to make our choice, and then build on what we decide. And that's, that's going to be the project. But, it, but it, I, I feel very strongly that it's going to it's shaped within the climate emergency, so our strategy is going to be very much, you know, uh, defined by that um, situation that we're in. I mean, the other thing is, Rudolf, you've worked on this for 35 years, but in the current system, 35 years is a very long time, and we don't have 35 years. We just don't have 35 years. That, for that, we know. So we have to work very quickly. Um, and, um, but because, Rudolf, you've kind of done the path and you're there to help us, I can call you any time and you'll tell me, don't whatever you do, do that. That's a complete waste of time. That is fantastic. Um, and um, so we'll be able to, to, you know, to learn from the experience. And of course, the, with, this is not the only project in Wales, yeah? There's lots of going on, as we discovered at the conference in the last two days. So there's lots of people to talk to. Um, but that's basically... I'm, I'm, um, I've got a whole, J Jimmy, I, I should say that the, the funders of this project are in the room which, and they've never actually met each other. Um, so the, the, the two funders are the <coughs> Conservation Farming Trust, which is a small not-for-profit which is set up by individuals and J Jimmy's here representing, and then the National Park Authority and I see two people with National Park badges on over there who've just come in. So thank you both for that because you, you, you very, very quickly responded and you moved very quickly so that we can, we can make a quick and small start. So uh, what, do, you know, what, what, what are the producers thinking? What are the consumers thinking? What are the various civic uh, groups and the, the authorities and so on and so forth? Which will enable us to, make, to take some decisions about direction and what we're going to focus on. So that's the first thing we'll be doing next year. Uh, we then want to build a producer alliance um, because of this power thing, that the, the, the producers working together become powerful. Um, and just talking to the producers so far, because we've been talking to every producer, and said, well, what is it? What do you really, really, really want? Uh, and their answer is, uh, the, the, the top answer is better sales channels to the local markets. So how do we sell better? locally. How do we sell cheaper? Uh, the, you know, the, how, how is the cost of sale cheaper? How do we sell more of it? Um, how do we get into people's lives, if you like? Because the reality is that the vast majority of people in this area drive down the A40 to the supermarkets, buy everything there and come, come back. That's what happens, except when it snows. And when it snows, the local shops are full of people. Okay, so that's, we know that's what happens and we've got to overcome that and challenge it so that's the the number one thing marketing as as uh, as, as Rudolf said we've got to start testing different kinds of marketing and marketing to the consumers but also marketing to the businesses marketing to the local authorities a big thing about local procurement in Wales we don't have big public institutions in this area so there's a, a, a there's a limit to that but that's what we need to do um, in answer to your question about lobbying we have got to we've got to fight this because it's going to be really difficult to change <coughs> systems to adapt to this approach so we we've really got to uh, strengthen up for that process and be very persistent um, and and then finally um, we we have to uh, the, all the sort of global calls for action say we need to start growing more vegetables and we need to use agroecological principles we really need to crack this what we want to do uh, with people who, who are in this room to start with is to demonstrate that you know you can grow uh, vegetables and fruit and sell them with one by making money 
right? So, and two, not breaking your back. Because there's a myth out there. It was, it was there yesterday in the last two days. Ah, oh, yes, but no one makes any money out of horticulture. Well, we're in trouble if that's the case, but it's not true. It can be done, but we have to demonstrate it in reality. And we will try and do that next year in this, in this town. Um, so my, my, I've got two invitations. The first is that in March, Rudolph is organising a big conference in that castle that he showed you. Um, on food systems and we are going to have a little group so if you would like to come uh, and join us and visit uh, Germany in March next year I'm not sure the dates uh, from 9 till uh, no from 11 till 13 yeah so we'll, we'll if you're interested in that just let me know yeah um, and secondly we to do this um, we have to have uh, a group of advocates it, it cannot be done that no person particularly myself has the uh, the authority or the knowledge to do this by themselves so we need to create a core team covering government farmers uh, environmental advocates and all, all of these people and, the, and consumers so if you're interested in becoming part of the sort of core the core group that that thinks this through from this point onwards, again, do so that we need to build that a really strong core, very committed, sort of a bit crazy core to, to, to push it forward.